Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I am your host, Dylan Howell. This is episode number 49 of our YouTube channel and podcast, and I could not be more excited to continue sharing with you guys these topics on personal finance and just allowing you guys to learn uh, from my experience and my knowledge uh, on these particular topics, and uh, hopefully it is helping you push towards financial freedom in your own life. Today, we're going to talk about emergency funds. Now, I know we've harped on emergency funds and we've talked about their importance, why you need to have them, all, all these types of things. But today, we're really going to nail that idea home um, when we talk about all the different ways that it can rain in your financial life because they call it a rainy day fund, right? So we're going to talk about all the different ways it can rain in your financial life and how emergency funds work to cover you uh, when it is raining, to be that umbrella to you uh, when you, you don't want to get wet from life's particular tragedies or uh, issues that can come. So before we get started, uh, make sure that you go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, subscribe to this channel, uh, and like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments. Um, also, if you are listening to this as a podcast on uh, Apple or Spotify podcast, make sure that you subscribe there as well and leave me a review in that uh, particular platform, uh, whichever you are listening to this on. Also, uh, follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan, um, and uh, I'll provide a lot of good financial tips and tricks to you every single day that will allow you to continue learning, um, even if it's just for a moment when you're looking at your phone uh, throughout the day. Uh, also, if you uh, want to work with me one-on-one -on -one, uh, in financial coaching and, and help, let me help you create a financial plan that is uh, just tailored to fit your life, uh, then you, we can definitely do that. All that you have to do is go to my website, www.mnowithdylan.com, click on the Work with Dylan tab, and you can pick the type of financial coaching session you would like to partake in. And we can start building that relationship and working on that together. Now, let's jump into emergency funds. And I just want to revisit them real quick and just talk about, you know, kind of why we have them, what they are, right? So without emergency funds, life can punch you in the mouth with no deterrent. There's no cushion between you and something tragic happening in your life, which can be a big issue. Things tend to go bad when you're unprepared. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that whenever you, uh, you know, go spend money on stupid stuff, then it turns out that you really needed money for something that was really important or, or something like that. You know, em emergencies happen and uh, they tend to happen when you're not prepared or, or when you least expect it. Emergencies also snowball. I mean, they, you know, have you heard everything happens in threes? You know, that things can, you know, happen that, that kind of compound on one another. And having an emergency fund makes an emergency hurt less. And that's the whole idea. And emergency funds allow us to save our investments, to save the uh, money that we you know, put away in retirement accounts or other investment accounts or investment properties or whatever it may be, um, and not pull money out of those and actually just have this little bit of insurance over here that keeps us um, at bay with the different tragedies that life may bring. And this will allow us to not pull from things that are actively growing and not be penalized for pulling from things like tax advantage retirement accounts that have penalties associated with early withdrawals. And then, you know, tragedy is sure. Things are sure to go wrong in your life. There's no question about it. And I, I'm by no means a pessimist, but things are for sure to go wrong. Things are not always going to go the way that you plan for them to go. And a lot of things are going to be quite costly. Um, so having some uh, concession in your financial plan, like an emergency fund, that can step in and take care of those things that uh, can really put a damper on your financial life is so, so important. And so that's why we want to have them there. We begin with one month worth of expenses, right, in an emergency fund. And then after we get out of consumer debt, we end up building that up to four to six months worth of expenses in that particular uh, emergency fund. And so this actually gets to be a pretty sizable amount of money, especially depending on what your monthly expenses are. So as negative as this might sound, but necessary as it is, it's today we're just really going to harp on the things that can go wrong and how emergency funds can help. Okay. So don't get too caught up in the fact that these things can go wrong. Just beware that they can happen, but 
Emergency funds can help. That's what I want you to focus on. Emergency funds can help in these situations. So what's the first one? I just want to start with the biggest reason that we keep an emergency fund. The biggest reason we keep an emergency fund and we measure it in expenses, months worth of expenses, is job loss. Okay, Job losses can be extremely, extremely costly, especially if you have all these bills, um, you're used to living life a certain way, um, You maybe you're still in debt maybe you know if you're still in debt you don't have the full emergency fund but you know maybe you know you have to take care of your kids or, or you're trying not to fall too far behind in your financial life job loss is super costly this is the big one and it's the primary reason that an individual is typically going to pull from an emergency fund it has to be there because you don't know when you're gonna lose your job some people's jobs are far more certain than others um, but you don't know when you're going to lose your job. And uh, the coronavirus kind of, you know, poked a hole in anybody who thought that they did know if they would keep a job or not. So um, having this emergency fund there, especially in that kind of situation, can really cushion the blow and allow you to work through a couple months of trying to find a new job uh, without having to stress too much about, you know, you can't pay your bills. And, and that's why we look at months worth of expenses because we think four to six months of expenses, surely within four months, you can find a new job, whether or not it's what you want to do long term. Surely you can find something that will um, cover your expenses. And surely you can find something um, that will hopefully push you into, uh, if nothing else, the next thing that is really what you want to be doing. Um, so that four to six months expenses should um, do very well to cover a job loss. And then, of course, there's the major medical expense. And we talked earlier this week about medical debt. We talked about uh, how medical expenses can be huge. Uh, but we also talked about how medical expenses can be covered with emergency funds. And uh, in many cases, pretty easily, given that you have a fully funded emergency fund. One big difficulty here, though, is if you don't have insurance or your insurance does not cover much, uh, then things can compound. Things can get even worse uh, to the point where you can't completely pay with it, pay uh, it off with the emergency fund, but you still want the emergency fund there. That way, uh, you can cushion the blow of the debt that you may have uh, by going ahead and you know paying down a, a large sum of it uh, with your emergency fund. And you're probably thinking, well, isn't the the flexible savings or uh, the HSA, like, aren't those going to be enough to cover those types of things, those medical expenses? Well, if you're a healthy individual who doesn't have many major medical issues, uh, then what typically happens is, is those individuals underfund uh, those health savings and uh, FSAs. So you won't really have a, a huge pile there unless you've been just compounding it for long periods of time. Uh, what is far more likely to be a more substantial amount of money, because those things can be used and should be used, uh, but the most substantial amount of money that you, you're likely going to have to throw at something like this is your emergency fund. Uh, so having that there and in place is going to be the biggest uh, deterrent to a major medical issue um, just stomping on your life and stomping on your finances. And then in a very similar way, um, major dental expenses can also be a huge deal when it comes to um, you know an emergency. So uh, a lot of things dental wise can be planned out and if you have dental insurance you can get some pretty good coverage uh, but some things just aren't paid for uh, and some things can be extremely costly and and there are things that you absolutely need um, that that keep your pearly whites pearly white or keep your pearly whites in your mouth um, and so that's um, that's something that can happen so this is very similar to the the major medical expenses but certain things that, that may come up are things like uh, implants um, you know, if you're trying to keep a tooth around, implants can be um, very, very expensive um, and they can be emergent. You know, you don't want to walk around with no teeth in your head, but they, they can definitely be um, an, an emergent thing. Uh, fillings, you need to get, you know, any cavities filled or things like that. Uh, that can also be costly without insurance, especially. Um, and, you know, it may be necessary to pull from your emergency fund. Now, Root canals are also another one that uh, can be really, really pressing, something that has to be done. Uh, that one can be far more emergent than those other two. Um, something that has to be done, has to be done quickly. Um, and uh, once it's done, uh, it can be 
a, a strain on your finances. So these aren't typically as costly as the major medical expenses, but um, they're still relevant because you might not see, you know, the need for something occurring and it occurs anyway, and maybe you don't have the cash on hand to just pay for it. That's what your emergency fund is there for. Now that said, it, it'd probably be smart to just set aside a little money each month for dental expenses. Uh, that way, if you do get into this place, you have a sinking fund that will allow you to uh, pay for this thing either mostly in cash uh, up front or um, you know, without touching your emergency fund. Then this next one is a pretty big one too, a pretty big emergency that people do have is uh, car repairs, right? And not only is it a big one, it's a more commonly misconstrued one. It's one that people uh, say it's an emergency when it's not really an emergency or say that they need a new car when they don't really need a new car and they just need to fix the one that they have. Uh, but some things that could be emergencies that you didn't really see coming, uh, transmissions, you know, flat tires, dead batteries, you know, your alternator brakes, and then a really big one is, you know, if you have liability coverage and uh, you were the cause of a wreck and it totals your car, or causes some really big damage to your car, really costly damage to your car, uh, then, you know, you're kind of stuck there with, with those costs and, and either having to replace your car or fix it or whatever. Um, and that can be emergent, especially if you need your vehicle to get around. Um, Again, you should set up sinking funds uh, for car repairs, but something big like a wreck like that, I mean, you, it's likely you're going to have to uh, dip into an emergency fund to fund something like that. Same thing with like the transmission, just those costly car repairs, you might have to dip into your emergency fund. Those are emergent. Those are things that, that have to be done now um, or else, you know, you're not going to be able to, um, you know, go on doing what you were doing the way you were doing it. So um, the, those are very, very important uh, to keep in mind, there are things that can happen, but emergency funds will definitely cover them. So, so having that emergency fund in place uh, to pay for those things, almost it'll cover almost any car-related thing. Um, obviously, if you have a thirty-five thousand dollar car on liability insurance and you total it, I mean, good luck. You know, there, there's not going to be a whole lot that um, you know. Depending on the size of your emergency fund, a, a lot of people have thirty thousand dollar emergency funds or whatever. Uh, but that doesn't mean you need to drain it all the way down just to purchase a new car. You may need to you know, buy you a little 10000 something with that emergency fund or something like that. Uh, but it, your emergency fund is in place to make sure that things like that don't ruin your financial life. Um, it, the, the emergency fund is not for just straight up comfort because it's not comfortable paying for any of these things. Uh, the emergency fund is far more for practicality and not going back into debt. And then there are also home repairs. So, you know, you have insurance to cover the major things, right? You have homeowner's insurance that'll cover a bunch of big things that go wrong. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's a deductible with that. And if you have a high deductible, then that can be a little more costly. And then plus insurance just doesn't cover everything on your home that can go wrong. Um, I mean, if your, you know, AC goes out or, or whatever, or, you know, if you have bad plumbing issues that you have to pay for out of pocket that aren't covered, um, those things can be extremely costly. So having an emergency fund there for those things that you really don't expect, you don't, you know, expect to have to uh, change out the plumbing in your, in, you know, underneath your home, or you don't ha expect to, to, you know, have to put in a new, you know, heat and air unit, you know, really soon after you purchase a home or something. Uh, so those things can definitely be emergencies and can be easily covered um, by emergency funds. Now, uh, some things with homes can be really, really, really costly. So I don't want you to think that you know emerg your emergency fund of four to six months is going to cover everything, but it's going to be pretty darn close because that's going to be a pretty substantial emergency fund when it's all said and done. But you know this is a particular reason why I say while you're still in debt, don't buy a house, right? So if you haven't already purchased a house, don't buy a house because house repairs, home repairs are just so darn expensive in a lot of cases and you don't have a fully funded emergency fund to take care of these things. I mean, if it's a Texas summer, like we're, we're on the back end of here, um, and I know it's October, but you know, it's, it's not cold yet. <laughs> so the, it, a Texas summer, like you're on the back end of here, and you move into a new house, you buy a new house, and the AC immediately goes out, guess who's gotta pay for that? That would be you. Or you just buy a new house and you know, you're, you know, uh, a pipe breaks under your home and you have to get your plumbing replaced. All those types of things can just be so costly 
Uh, so having an emergency fund in place is a, is a big, big deal. And that's why we put purchasing a home where we do with the financial action plan um, if you don't own one already. Then another something that emergency funds can help cover is a bigger than expected tax bill. So um, let's be honest, sometimes we make tax mistakes. Sometimes uh, tax mistakes are made by your employer. Um, so sometimes you you underwithhold, and uh, that happened to us a little bit last year. It wasn't horrible, uh, but we underwithheld a little bit, owed a little bit um, when it came to the end of the year. So so that's something that can happen. You can underwithhold taxes and then um, owe something that you didn't expect. Um, you can sell investments or a secondary property or something throughout the course of a year and have capital gains that you have to pay on that. Um, and, and that can be quite costly if you didn't already plan for it. Um, and then, you know, taxes can really be the last thing we think about when we do certain financial transactions. And uh, that can also lead to a lot of pain because if we do have a big capital gain on something and we sold something, then um, you know, taxes could be quite high depending on, you know, amounts or whatever, but you just need to make sure that, you know, as you go along, you are taking taxes into account, um, because that is something that is controllable for the most part. So, um, obviously the, um, IRS tells us how much we need to pay in taxes or whatever, um, but they're withholding throughout the year, our employers withholding throughout the year. And a lot of us are just very easy to trust that the employer's withholding the correct amount. And that may not be the case. So make sure you go, the IRS has a great tool for this too, for the under withholding or over withholding thing um, to where you can go online and there's a calculator that you put in all your information and they'll tell you how much needs to get held out of each check. And so you, may, you can make those changes yourself. And so we actually had to do that this past year uh, to make sure everything was, was on the up and up as far as uh, tax withholding goes. Um, but you know, if you, if you do under withhold by a substantial amount, that can be an emergency and you do have to pay the tax man. That's an emergency. Uh, so you, you would, you would go ahead and pay for that, but, um, don't just be negligent. Make sure that, uh, you're paying attention and uh, don't get caught with your pants down when it comes to taxes. And then obviously, you know, if there's a death in your family, if, you know, you have a parent die or a relative die, um, you know, going and, and, being at a funeral is a very important thing, you know, being um, there for your family, being there for uh, that person's family, whatever, is, is an important thing to do. And so it may be costly to travel and go do that. Um, so an emergency fund can be used for that. Or if you have to pitch in on the funeral itself, uh, an emergency fund can be a good place to do that. You know, funerals can cost upwards of $10,000 sometimes, depending on what people do. And so um, that, that's a just a really somber thing, but it's something that needs to be in place also, not just if other people pass away, if you pass away. Yes, I do want you to have term life insurance in place um, or adequate investments that you can self-insure yourself, which, you know, is that's a adequate, that's a lot of uh, money to be able to self-insure yourself. Uh, but I do, do want you to have term life insurance if people require um your income in, you know, their particular life, you know, your spouse, your children, whatever, if they rely on that, then, then that's necessary, but it's going to take a little time for the life insurance company to get the money to them. So have an emergency fund in place in case, you know, you pass away or your spouse passes away or your child or something like that. Um, God forbid, but that is something you can, um, that they can have access to really easy and they can go ahead and pay for your funeral expenses and then receive, uh, the life insurance money on the back end. Uh, that way they're just not in a cash crunch uh, if something that devastating were to occur. So it's thinking about more than just yourself in that way. That's, you know, it's thinking about your family and, and those that are going to be left behind you. Um, but don't want to be too pessimistic. That's just something that it is a reality and it needs to be covered. Um, and these are all ways that it can rain. But the good news is, is that we can hold an umbrella in the way and that umbrella is the emergency fund. So what do we do if our emergency fund's not enough? So we kind of talked about this when we talked about medical debt. You know, sometimes, you know, you're just not going to be able to cover everything uh, that a bill requires of you or that an emergency requires of you. So what do we do if our emergency fund's not enough? Let's walk down the line here. So obviously, for, the first thing you would do is just deplete any emergency fund you do have and throw it towards the thing, right? Other than the one month of expenses, um, just, you know, deplete down to that value. Then we're gonna look at any taxable investment accounts we have or properties that we own that we can sell and turn into cash. 
uh, we would want to do that next uh, because those things, there aren't penalties with them. Um, and we can go ahead and sell them and pay for the particular big debt that we can't afford. And then the worst case scenario is that you're so cash strapped or you have so little in assets that um, you have to you know, take out some type of debt. And I don't recommend this, but uh, if you're left in a situation where you just have to pay something, um, then it, you know, you're kind of stuck. You, you need to uh, take care of it somehow. And we've talked about you know, home equity lines of credit. Even though I, I don't like them, I don't want you to take them out. If you have to, once again, these are bankruptcy looming situations then you know you can take out a home equity line um you can use your you know you can use credit cards that you may have um again bankruptcy looming type situation um also personal loans bankruptcy looming type situations that's the only situation i want you to be running to debt to take care of something is uh you know if bankruptcy is looming on a particular thing but it's going to be hard to come by debt if bankruptcy is looming anyway so um that's why i talked first about that home equity line uh, because you can likely get to that because that is, you know, your own money that was put into that home. Now, if that thing can be paid off quickly, I, I talk about the credit card. The credit card is something where you can cover something real quick and I don't want to accrue much interest, right? So um, the credit card might be okay there. Uh, but if not, you may need some type of financing from a lender or, you know, get a HELOC through a lender. And, you know, this may simply be a medical bill that you can make payments on or dental work that you can make payments on, in which case, fantastic, make payments on it, right? But I'm talking about if you are forced to be uh, paying some kind of big sum, uh, that is a tough situation to be in. So uh, I don't want you guys to fall behind on those bills. Uh, if you can set up a, a payment plan, then do so, and then put it in the middle of your debt repayment plan that we've talked about uh, and, you know, whether, you know, wherever it's at, smallest to largest and, and attack. And so we, we've talked about all of those things, but you guys, you guys just need to know, you know, if the emergency fund doesn't cover, then um, it's either going to, you know, turn into some type of debt for you, uh, or you're going to have to start liquidating some things to cover uh, that particular emergency. But just understand, once we do deplete that emergency fund and then we, you know, get our debts paid off and everything, we have to rebuild that emergency fund back up. We have to bring that thing back to four to six months of expenses at that point, uh, because we can't be in a position uh, after that, let, so let's say just uh, for just example, let's say you're moving along well. You've got your four to six months. You bought a house. You're saving for retirement. All these things, right? And you get to a point where uh, a big medical issue happens, and it's more than your emergency fund. But you throw your emergency fund at it, right? And then you get on a payment plan with the um, hospital or your doctor's office or whatever and you start making those payments and you eventually pay it off. Well, now you do have a home where home repairs can pop up. We've talked about that today already. And you're, you're in a place where, you know, you've got a lot of responsibility, a lot of things that can go wrong. You've got a car that might need repairs. You've got, you know, you never know with dental work. You never know. With, all these things that we talked about previously could go wrong. You know, you could lose a job, whatever. You have to make sure that you rebuild that emergency fund. The emergency fund is not just a one hit and quit. It's not just a you know, do it one time, have it done one time and be done with it. Um, no, you're going to build it. And if you end up using it, build it back, right? We, we want it to be built back. Uh, that way, if we ever need it again, we can use it again. Because obviously you could need it because you did need it. And just know with emergency funds, we're playing probabilities, right? We're not trying to cover every single little emergency out there. We do not need to overdo it with our emergency funds, right? We we do need an adequate amount. We do want something that uh, puts cushion between you and life going wrong, but there's certain things you just cannot uh, possibly insure against. Um, so much tragedy that you just can't insure against, and that's okay, uh, but we want to play the probabilities of things that are more likely uh, and things that are not as extremely costly. So typically, the things that are more likely uh, aren't the most costly things. You know, We want to make sure that we can take care of things that are are, are likely to happen or, or that could happen, uh, but not things that are like, wow, that happened? Wow, that's unbelievable. No, we, we, uh, we don't want to save up for those things because then we'll be saving forever. We won't be able to uh, start building wealth in our retirement accounts and investment accounts. And um, it's going to set us back if we spend too much time on the emergency fund. Uh, it'll set us back and it'll set you in a cash heavy position 
where you have too little of an, in investments and you don't have enough of your money working for you. I understand tragedies are scary and, and emergencies are scary, uh, but don't let them scare you into bad financial t decisions. Don't let them scare you away from the statistics and away from the probabilities. I understand that things can go wrong and compound, but don't let them scare you off of your plan. Follow the financial action plan. You will not be sorry for following that plan because it will walk you right down the line of the things that you need to do and just do them in order. And if you get set back, come back even stronger the next time. Come back uh, with a vengeance when you build that emergency fund back up. And um, for sure, if your particular situation changes and you start making more money, build it up more. You know, if your expenses go up, build it up more. Uh, so it will help cover things uh, if you were to lose a job or something like that. So um, just having that in place is so important and it covers all of these ways to where it rains on your financial life. So undoubtedly, emergency funds are one of the most important pieces of a strong financial foundation. You are going to be hard pressed to get anywhere financially if you don't have some good liquid cash savings like an emergency fund uh, that will help take care of things that come up along the way because things will come up. Nobody's path is going to be perfectly smooth. Nobody's path is going to be perfect. Um, so you need to understand that these emergency funds are necessary and they'll cover all these things that maybe you don't think about. That's why I wanted to bring these things up today is so you would actually think about how, hmm, it's actually pretty likely that my house needs repaired. It's actually you know, maybe more likely than I thought previously that I'm, I could lose my job in a, you know, in a, you know, layoff situation or, or whatever, or if the market were to um, tank or if the economy tanks, whatever it may be, uh, then my job is not as safe as I thought it was, or, um, you know, my, my car might need repair, whatever it may be, right? Uh, any of these big emergencies that we talk about, um, you just want to be prepared. Or, or maybe you look and you go, my, my health is not that great. Um, maybe it's more likely that I'm, I'm going to have a big medical bill. So I need to have this emergency fund in place. Yeah, you do. We all do. No matter who you are, you need an emergency fund in place. Some people need one that's bigger than others. Um, but everybody needs one. Everybody needs that cushion between them and the things that could happen in their life. And I want to, you know, just push that on you. Make sure that you know that you do need that. Uh, it'll just bring you some more peace of mind and will allow you to be in a place uh, that is much more comfortable financially. So hey, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit the big red subscribe button below. Like this video. Leave me any feedback in the comments if you haven't already. Um, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to subscribe. Leave me a review there. Uh, also, follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. I put out a lot of good stuff there. I think you guys would really like that if you went and followed me. Also, if you want financial coaching, if you want me to help you build a plan for your financial future, you can go to www.mnowithdylan.com, click on the Work with Dylan tab, and pick the type of financial coaching session you would like and sign up there. So tune in tomorrow as I talk about the do's and don'ts of emergency funds. Because today, yeah, we talked about all the things that could go wrong and how emergency funds can help. But I want to be clear, all the do's and don'ts of emergency funds and really nail those home so we know why emergency funds are so important, how they should be used, and that may motivate you to actually go and save up an emergency fund. So hopefully that's what it does uh, and we can move forward uh, with a lot of confidence and financial strength from that point. So thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.